Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime News on TV1 for the News First Team. I'm Martin Satyanesan. Let's start off with a look at your headlines for this afternoon. Protest held demanding the cut-off marks of the Grade 5 scholarship examination be reduced. What is going to happen to the East Container Terminal? The Prime Minister holds discussions with the trade unions. Details revealed regarding the tremors that were reported in Lunugala yesterday. Myanmar military seizes power in coup. Now those stories in detail. Myanmar's military has confirmed it has taken control of the country after Aung San Suu Kyi and other political leaders were arrested in the early hours. The Inter-University Student Federation convening a media briefing expressed views regarding the problems in admitting students to universities. Students who sat for the advanced level examination in 2019 were enrolled to the universities through a system fair for all the students. Without any additions, the University Grants Commission divided all the slots available in universities to two subject streams. That is how the UGC did it this year. The UGC had followed the method of considering the percentages of university entries for five years. The University Grants Commission is selfish. If they are under the impression that we will stand back and wait, they are wrong. This effort will end now. If the University Grants Commission cannot say that they will not use this method for future admissions, the demonstration will not end now. A discussion is being held today between port employees who are engaged in a work to rule trade union action against the decision regarding the East Container Terminal. The meeting commenced at the Temple Trees. Subject Minister Rohit Abe Gunavadana met with the Prime Minister before arriving at the Temple Trees this morning. <laughs> Many factions, including teachers' unions and parents, are engaging in a protest in Colombo Fort, demanding that the cut-off marks of the scholarship examination be reduced. Protesters march from Colombo Fort to the presidential secretariat. A tense situation arose between the police and the protesters. We will have more details on this particular story during our prime time bulletin at 9 tonight. Several opinions were expressed in the political sphere regarding the East Container Terminal crisis at the Colombo port. We have to look at this from a business standpoint. The president said the best example. He said that he has a plot of land, however he does not have the funds to develop it. We will find a person who will get this done. We can have the ownership of the land and the business and let him manage it. These measures are taken to develop the business. There will not be any talks about selling it out at any time. The leaders of this country have no option now. If the port is given, the country cannot survive. If the port is given, they will not be able to face the world. We ask the government to heed to the demands of the traders, the Mahasangha and the people. We request that the container terminal be held with the port. Do not be adamant and give this away. Develop it using public funds. This is what we are asking. Our government has given a pledge regarding the East Container Terminal. You were silent when the Hambantota port was given for 99 years. We have provided the land to be developed. We are not selling the asset of this country. However, we will listen to the voice of the people and the alternatives. We will make a decision once we review all of these. By giving away partial ownership of the port, we will get $650 million. But for these racketeers, it will be worth billions of dollars. If not, they would not do such things. Without providing a clear picture to the president, they are carrying out this agenda. 
There is a question raised whether the president is aware of all of these and as to why he is taking the side of the racketeers. We remind the president, if you are out of power, if you become like Ranil Vikramasinghe, there is no point thinking about it then. Use your brain when you have power and carry out a successful plan. <laughs> Measures are in place to develop the East Container Terminal and give it to the Adani Group. How much is provided as a bribe to the cabinet and the government by the Adani Group? We do not want this Adani company to use the resources of this country to recover their bribe. Many factions, including teachers' unions and parents, are engaging in a protest in Colombo Fort, demanding that the cut-off marks of the scholarship examination be reduced. Protesters marched from Colombo Fort to the presidential secretariat. A tense situation arose between the police and the protesters. <laughs> A press briefing regarding the National Independence Day celebrations was held in Colombo this morning. Health regulations will be followed this year and like other years following discussions with the President and the Prime Minister based on the current situation. We have arranged the Independence Day celebrations in an exemplary manner this time around. We are requesting the state institutions to hoist the national flag from the 1st to the 7th and we request the house owners to do so. There will be an all-night period chanting ceremony on the 3rd. On the morning of the 4th, the parade of the three armed forces will be held. The president is expected to address the nation. We will use only a limited number of personnel for the parade this time. We will use personnel that are adequate to portray the pride of our Independence Day. All the military and police personnel will undergo a PCR test or an antigen test. The health guidelines will be followed to the letter. The police said that restrictions to vehicular movement along roads around Independence Square will be imposed until 1 p.m. today in line with the Independence Day rehearsals and celebrations. Restrictions to vehicular movement in roads encompassing the Independence Square and Independence Avenue will be in effect from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. today. 
We request the people who use the said roads to use alternative routes to travel today. Traffic police and signboards have also been assigned in those roads. However, residents and employees of private or state sector corporations located in the vicinity of these roads will be allowed by the traffic regulations imposed by the police. These restrictions will continue until the 3rd of February. Therefore, we would like to request the employees of corporations located in the vicinity of those roads to follow the regulations tomorrow and on Wednesday. Wagema heta dini, tanida dini, oba karya le te family ne bitu udahsan. Mea karya te mo bagi karya le ni dahas caturashte asana pradeshola pihitla tiro nang. Yamma karya ke dasi ma wan netiway. Esam banden ratawahan raja karya kerna niladaringi upades sanua kati tu kerna lesser karya ni kuwila sitno. Today is the fifteenth day of the protest that was commenced by the farmers of Walsapagala. The protesting farmers are demanding a lasting solution to the human elephant conflict. The protest is held with the participation of representatives of 86 farmers organizations including the Valava Left Bank United Farmers Organization. The remains of a wild elephant was found on a paddy field in the Valikanda Mahavalitan area in Polonarwa yesterday. The Valikanda Wildlife Office has received information about a dead elephant yesterday. It is suspected that the elephant may have died after being electrocuted. Wildlife officials said the elephant, which is about 8 feet and 9 inches tall, was about 35 years old. The owner of the paddy field where the elephant was found has been arrested by the Valikanda Wildlife Office. Further investigations into the incident are currently underway. The Geological Survey and Mines Bureau states that there is a subterranean layer of limestone in Lunagana, Akiria, where a tremor occurred last morning. The tremor, which occurred around 3 a.m. yesterday, was felt by residents of about five villages. Previous earthquakes have been reported to have been caused by limestone quarries near Victoria Reservoir. A small tremor was reported last week as well. We are conducting investigations into the two tremors. A limestone layer in the area has been dried off. Moreover, gem mining is also being carried out there. Within the next week, we will carry out research to find the plausible impact that this... The Department of National Zoology stated that the open... All zoos in the island that were temporarily closed due to the spread of the second wave of COVID-19 will reopen today in accordance with health guidelines. The Department of National Zoology stated that the opening will be done with strict adherence to health guidelines. Accordingly, the Dehivala and Pinnavala zoos will be open seven days a week, the Pinnavala Elephant Orphanage, three days for foreign tourists and four days for local tourists. Further, the Department of National Zoology Gardens also informed visitors to make arrangements online before visiting the Ridhiagama Safari Park. The postgraduate unit of business administration at the Uwavel Lassi University was inaugurated yesterday. The event was held under the auspices of Vice Chancellor of the Uwavel Lassi University Professor Jayantalal Ratnasekara. <laughs> Sixty-nine students have registered for the postgraduate unit of the Business Administration this year. The ceremony was held at the main conference hall of the Uwa Vellasa University in accordance with quarantine guidelines. The launching of the first taught postgraduate program of the Uwa Vellasa University, Master of Business Administration. All our undergraduate programs are multidisciplinary and focused on entrepreneurial education. We have made a significant contribution to the economy of the country by producing graduates with skills, knowledge and attitudes required for, a, for the social economic development of the country. This is where the OLSC University always try to bridge that gap between the real theory and the real world. From that, we bring to a close this edition of Lunchtime News on TV1. For details of these stories and much more, simply log on to our website, www.newsfirst.lk. For the News First team, I'm Martin Satyanison, along with producer Senita Sena Naika. You have yourself a wonderful day.